Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. 12 more people have died from the coronavirus in San Diego County. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kimberly Hunt. There are now 31 deaths from COVID-19 in San Diego. County leaders also reported 50 more reported cases. That brings our total to 1,454. The county estimates more than 200 San Diegans have recovered so far. 10 News anchor Lindsay Pena shows us why experts say the death toll rose sharply today. Although the rise in the number of cases might at first seem alarming, experts say there's a number of factors that contribute to it and it's not necessarily a reason to be concerned. Chief Health Officer Dr. Wilma Wooten said the total number of deaths now sits at 31, which makes up about 2% of the total cases here in San Diego County. Most of these individuals uh, had underlying uh, medical conditions, 61% are male and 39% are female. She added that the increase was tied to other factors and that it doesn't necessarily mean all those people died on the same day, simply that their deaths can now be connected to coronavirus. The increase in deaths should uh, be no cause for alarm as the number of deaths uh, typically lag behind the number of positive cases reported. We spoke to professor and epidemiologist Tyler Smith, who says it's all about perspective and points to a country like Italy. You're seeing you know, around a 10% uh, case fatality rate there. In, in the U.S., we're seeing more of, of a 1% to 2% case fatality rate. While there's debate over how many cases and deaths we may ultimately see in the coming weeks, experts do seem to agree the precautions in place now do seem to be bringing the numbers down. I do think we're flattening the curve, at least in San Diego, and, and it appears in California. Lindsay Pena, 10 News. Two more crew members have been evacuated from the Disney Wonder cruise ship. A 10 News viewer snapped these pictures today along the Embarcadero. Medical teams in full protective gear went on board and loaded the crew members into separate ambulances. We were able to ask county health experts about the situation during today's press conference. These were individuals who were known to have COVID by testing and have been followed on the ship. Uh, and uh, each developed signs and symptoms that needed to be uh, taken care of uh, at uh, hospitals. Uh, one patient I know has been admitted. I think the other is uh, under investigation. Dr. Eric McDonald also talked about the malaria drug hydroxychloroquine. President Trump has suggested it appears to be helpful against COVID-19, but our local emergency doctor says there's no evidence yet to prove it. And there are a number of locations that are uh, attempting to study uh, whether these drugs in fact work. Uh, and specifically with hydroxychloroquine, um, you know, that is not recommended by, uh, uh, the, by us or by the FDA. Uh, and uh, again, I think that um, it is, is concerning, frankly, that there's so much discussion about uh, drugs that um, uh, are maybe considered experimental. Dr. McDonald says some local doctors may be trying it on their patients as a desperate measure, but they recommend in most cases waiting until tests prove it works. This afternoon, President Trump responded to questions about an early warning of a COVID-19 outbreak in the U.S. that circulated in the White House months ago. My co-anchor Steve Atkinson is joining us from home with those details. Steve. Kim, the president claims he has taken appropriate action on the virus since the very beginning. And this potentially explosive information comes on the very same day that voters in Wisconsin went to the polls for their primary. Here's ABC's Alex Prochet. In Wisconsin, thousands there waiting to vote, forced to choose between protecting their own health and exercising their rights. I did it for the people that can't vote today or, or won't for the safety of their families. Wisconsin Democratic governor had tried to postpone the election. The state's top health official warning that in-person voting would accelerate the transmission of COVID-19. But Republican lawmakers arguing elections are essential services. The courts agreed they should not be postponed. The decision to go ahead with the primary applauded by President Trump, who called the delay partisan politics because he endorsed a conservative judge on the ballot. And I endorsed him. And as soon as I endorsed him, they wanted to move the election. During Tuesday's briefing, the president also asked about a memo dated January 29th, written by trade advisor Peter Navarro, 
warning of a coronavirus outbreak in the U.S., Navarro writing that not having a vaccine or immune protection risked the virus turning into a full-blown pandemic with dire medical and economic consequences. The president said he had not seen the memo. If you had read the memo at the time, how would that have changed the steps you took or the statements? I don't think it would have changed because I did. I basically did what the memo said. Maintaining he did not downplay the danger. I said it was just like a flu. So the worst pandemic we ever had in this world was a flu. This was the president in February. You know, you do certain things that you do when you have the flu. I mean, view this the same as the flu. The administration also working with Congress for more economic aid, an additional $250 billion for the small business loan program. Some business owners telling ABC News that there are glitches with it. I spent all day online trying to apply for this or apply for that, but nothing come through yet. I mean, it's just like they say they're not ready. The bank's not ready. Also under consideration, a second round of direct payments to Americans. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin saying, quote, we'll come back to that issue. Alex Perchet, ABC News, Washington. Now, they mentioned that $251 billion loan for small businesses. That would be for 500 employees or less. That funding, though, would help pay for salaries, benefits, and other costs like mortgages, rent, and utilities. Kim? All right. Thank you, Steve. And talks are underway to resolve a dispute over furloughs prompted by the coronavirus pandemic. This comes after hundreds of city workers were told they must forego pay. The city's union calls the furloughs illegal. The city and union met behind closed doors today to hash out the agreement. We're going to continue to work with our employees as we move forward. Um, we're going to need to make some difficult decisions as a city. The furloughed employees will get three weeks pay. They may be eligible for unemployment as well as qualify for pay under the new COVID-19 program. If the furloughs last until June, it would save the city $15 million. And the city of Chula Vista is laying off about 350 employees because of the pandemic. According to the Union Tribune, the workers are all part-time or seasonal. They mainly come from the Parks and Recs Department as well as libraries. And the city manager says they hope to be able to rehire as many of the employees as possible once the crisis ends. There is some good news for Chula Vista City Councilman Steve Padilla. He is now recovering at home after spending days in the hospital and on a ventilator in the ICU. He tweeted this afternoon saying that it's great to be home and he's getting his strength back. Padilla first tested positive for COVID-19 nearly a month ago. He was taken off the ventilator late last week. We're glad he's home. Turning now to our weather, the winds taking over an already wet start to the week. Strong winds knocked over this tree in the parking lot earlier today at the Pechanga Arena and a telltale sign of heavy rainfall. The San Diego River flooded at Avenida del Rio at Fashion Valley. The area is now taped off. Right now, rain falling across the county. This is dash cam footage from our 10 News breaking news tracker as it's getting soaked driving around. And 10 News meteorologist Angelica Campos tracking the storm for us. It's been a just a yes. heck of a day out there, Angelica. <laughs> yes, we've had it all. It certainly doesn't feel like April. We've had some pretty heavy rainfall, but we also had some breaks. Now the wind is subsiding, but the rain is picking up. Not everywhere. It's certainly picking up, especially closer to downtown. So we're going to take you around the county, starting in the North County, where the rain is coming down heavy in Escondido, all the way down towards Rancho Bernardo, and also in Del Mar and Mira Mesa. The rain not as heavy but it is steady and it is going to be ongoing for at least another 30 minutes or so. In Coronado, that rain is actually picking up. You see it stretching all the way out into uh, downtown Hillcrest, where we do have some periods of heavy rain. Then we go closer to the border yesterday at this hour. It wasn't even raining in Ivy, but it is tonight. It is changing as we go. We're going to continue to see more showers, more periods of heavy rain. We remain under a flash flood watch. I'll pinpoint how much more rain we'll see and also which areas have already picked up almost five inches of rain. All right. Thank you.